thank you for another day, another Sunday to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, it is only because of you, because of your power, because of your, your provision that we are here today, that we made it through another week. And God, for that, we just say thank you. And we lift your holy name on high. Because there is none like you in all the earth, in all the heavens. You are an awesome God, and you are worthy. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on
We have promises that cannot be taken from us. God, we love you so much. And we thank you. And anything that's distracting us, God, anything on our hearts, God, we just lay it at your feet and we trust and know that you will answer, you will provide, you will take care of, and we don't have to carry that burden. We don't have to carry any burdens because of who our daddy is. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Lord. We honor you and we praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Movement Church Online. And to many of you, welcome back. I know you're probably thinking, wow, something's different. This is not the same setting that I'm used to. And you are correct. Because right now, I'm at a conference in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm excited to be here because this is the home of the late, great Muhammad Ali. But also, I'm very excited because no matter where I'm at in the world, I'm able to share God's word with you. And today, I'm starting a brand new series entitled what it means to be free now you might be thinking why talk about freedom why talk about what it means to be free when we already are free i mean we live in the land of the free we can make the choices we want to make we could choose to go where we want to go we could do what we want to do we could say what we want to say why talk about what it means to be free well there's one simple answer for that regardless of all the things that we think we have and all the freedoms that we think we have access to, very few of us are truly free. Very few of us are truly living in the freedom God has given us to live in. And the main reason why we're not doing that is because we simply don't know what it means to be free. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to teach a class and we were talking about kind of gender roles and expectations. And one of my students did a presentation and they showed several musical artists that were presenting themselves, women who were presenting themselves in provocative ways that sung songs that were really about sex and sexual exploits and stating things that, you know, you wouldn't want your children to hear. Well, after that, the presenter, my student said, these women, were groundbreaking for women worldwide because they were actually able to walk in their freedom. They were actually free to talk about sexuality in a way that women wouldn't have talked about it before. They were free to do what they wanted and they had this sexual freedom. And I thought about it for a moment, right in that class, I was thinking about what she was saying. I thought about the images that she showed and the words that the people were saying in their music. And I said to the presenter and said to the class, that's not freedom. And I think many of them were taken aback. I think I even heard people gasp as I said that because they had learned or believed that that type of presentation shows this freedom of women. And I get what they were saying. But then I had to share with them and I wanted them to think, I wanted to push them a little more. I said, listen, if we as men, if men in our society believe women should be seen sexually, if we see them more as females, as more of sexual exploits than in the likeness and image of God, and then a woman takes that on mentally and expresses that through her attitude and actions, can we really say that's freedom? Can we really say if we live according to the bondage that we have been under, or I should say it this way, if we choose to live in the bondage that we used to be in, think the ways that we were told to think, speak in ways that people want us to speak anyway, can we truly be free? Listen, you can't be free if you're living according to a system and a way of thinking that is meant to keep you in bondage. And it breaks my heart because too many of us think that we are free and that we're living in our freedom because we're no longer being forced into bondage, but instead we have chosen to live in bondage. And that's a problem because the scripture tells us that whom the son has set free 
is free indeed. In fact, Galatians says Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free. So we are supposed to be free. In Christ Jesus, he has given us freedom due to the finished work that he did in this earth, on the cross, getting up from that grave. We are free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed, but yet those who are free indeed are still in bondage. They have chosen bondage. We have chosen bondage. And many of you have chosen bondage instead of the freedom that Christ has given you. It's time to be free. And in this lesson, I want to provide the answer what it means to be free. And then we will explore what that means even more so in future lessons and how to do so. So let's talk about that. To understand what it means to be free, we're going to take a look at the Bible in a different way than we usually do. You see, we can look at the Bible through a chapter study or look at it through a book study where we study a whole book. And we've done that several times. We can also do a devotional look at the Bible as well as a word study. But for this teaching and really for this series, we're going to do what is called a survey of the Bible. We're going to look at how freedom, free, what it means to be free is expressed from the beginning to the end. And while we may not cover every single scripture that talks about it, we'll get a good picture, a good understanding of what it truly means to be free so that we know how to live in the freedom that God has provided for us, the freedom that Jesus has given us, the freedom that we should be living in and walking in each and every day. So let's start at the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, where we find the creation story. We learn about God creating the heavens and the earth and everything within them then when we jump to chapter two we learn about the beginning or the creation of the first woman and man man and woman to be created in the earth and it's in chapter two where we also see the first time the word free or a derivative of it freely being used and it's in Genesis chapter 2 where God is actually the first to use this word. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, it says this, The Lord God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely, there's the word, freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So God tells the man, you're placed in this garden. Your assignment is to tend it and protect it. And while you're doing that, you have the freedom to eat of any tree around here. Except for one. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stay away from it. Don't touch it. So the man had freedom right there. He had freedom to eat of everything that God had provided for him. Everything that God told him that was good for him. He had that freedom to walk in that and to live in that. As long as he tended that garden, as long as he protected the garden, as long as he took care of the animals there, as long as he lived according to God's will, he was living in freedom. But when we jump to Genesis chapter 3, I want us to look at verse 1 because something happens here. It says in verse 1, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the tree in the garden? Of course, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It is only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. 
notice that in the first passage that we read from Genesis 2, God gave the man some instructions. He placed him in the garden, told him to tend it and protect it. And then he told him he was free to eat anything except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We see in this chapter, verse chapter 3, where the serpent starts to talk to Eve. And we give Eve a hard time, don't we? We say Eve was horrible. She was influenced by the serpent. But the scripture tells us that Adam was there with her the whole time. And that it wasn't until he ate that sin, that pain, that death, and bondage came into the earth. Here's the answer to our question, what it means to be free. You see, freedom is not living according to our choices but it's living according to our calling. And the only way we can be free is when we have decided and are living in the call that God has given us, when we're living out all that God has created us to live for, that's when we're free. You see, we think, and as I stated earlier, we think freedom is freedom because we're not forced into bondage. We're not forced to live a certain way. But we can't call freedom, or maybe we can call it that, but it's not. Freedom is not when we choose bondage for our lives. Freedom is not living in the bondage that we have chosen to live in. You see, freedom is when we recognize who we are according to God's word and according to God's ways, and we live it out on a regular basis. When we recognize an almighty God has created us, he has placed us in this earth, and we have the ability to live free in him because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. See, that's freedom. And that's where Adam and Eve messed up because they were living in the freedom that God had provided. But instead, they allowed themselves to be influenced to live in bondage. You know, too often, the reason why we live in bondage or we choose to live in bondage is because we're influenced or because of what we have learned. And what I mean is we're influenced to think freedom is a certain way or freedom is a certain feeling or freedom is gaining and doing what we desire. And that's not freedom at all. But then we have been taught, and yes, that's a form of influence, but we have been taught certain ways. We have been taught that we have rights and we have these things that we can do. We've been taught that we should spend money on things we don't need. We have been taught that we should eat foods that are not good for us. We have been taught that we, ha we should be in relationships that are not good for us. We have been taught by the society that we live in that because we are a certain race, a certain gender, live in a certain area, that we cannot do certain things. We cannot be who God fully created us to be. Oh my goodness, I know, I don't know about you, but there have been many times where people have said to me that you'll never be this, that you'll never accomplish that, that there's no way you can do this. But they forget that when you're walking in the calling of an almighty God and his hand is upon you and his spirit is working in and through your life, that nothing can stop you from being who he has created you to be. See, that's freedom. That's freedom when we fully understand the calling that God has given us and we're walking in it. And the reason why we can do this is because we're no longer under influence of anyone or anything that tries to make us follow the ways of bondage. You see, Adam and Eve, they messed up because they allowed themselves to be under the influence of the serpent. And they listened to the serpent and they allowed the serpent to really minister to their hearts. But the thing was that the serpent wasn't ministering any to anything to them that they weren't already feeling themselves. You see, the scripture tells us that Eve was already looking at the fruit and it looked good. It looked delicious. It was something that she desired and she took it. And not only did she take it, 
but she gave it to Adam. And Adam took it and he ate it as well. You see, there's things that you might want. There's things that in your flesh, in that human nature that you desire. But you know it's not good for you. Because those times when you have taken of it, it ended up in shame. Here's what you see in verse 7. It says, at that moment. What moment? When Adam ate the fruit. Not necessarily Eve, because Adam was the one who was given the assignment. Adam was the one who was given the calling to fulfill. When he ate it, it says, at that moment, their eyes were opened. And they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. You see, any time we're not living in the freedom that God has given us, shame is nearby. When we do things that are outside his will, we're caught up in shame. You see, shame only comes when we are not living uh, the powerful and righteous lives that God has given us to live. Shame was there. And Adam and Eve recognized something, something they never experienced before and something they didn't even know what it was until after they did something that was not according to the will of God. They experienced shame. And I don't know about you, that there have been times in my life, life where I walked in things that I thought was freedom. I did things because I thought I was free, because I could choose to do them. But right afterwards, was shame. I possessed things that I thought I should possess, did things that I thought I should do, but right afterwards was shame. But you know, when you walk in the freedom that God provides, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. When we walk in that freedom, when we stay free, there is no shame attached. Listen, right after they did that, notice what it says in the scripture, verse 9. It says, Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? God didn't ask that question because he didn't know where Adam was. I mean, he's God, he's the creator of heaven, heaven and earth. He created Adam. He placed Adam right there. So obviously he wasn't saying that because he had no clue where Adam was. He wasn't saying, where were you? Where are you physically, Adam? He's saying, where are you in your heart, Adam? Where are you in your mind, Adam? Where are you? And that's the question we have to deal with today. That's the question you need to acknowledge for yourself where are you where are you in your heart right now where are you in your mind right now and yes maybe for some of us where are you physically right now where are you see that that question that god i believe is asking us today is a question where it causes us to do somewhat of a self-examination where you might have thought you were free because you had a choice. You made the decision. But when you really think about where am I or where you are, you might find out that you are actually believing some things that those who want to oppress you also want you to believe. We're living in the ways of the oppressor for that for our lives. We're allowing a society that want to keep us in bondage to keep us in bondage because we think that's the way we should be, that's what we should do, that's how we should live. Where are you really? Have you chosen to be in bondage to the systems and the ways of this country that want to keep you in bondage financially, want to keep you in bondage by eating things that cause you to have bad health or living with or being with or talking to or hanging out with people that are no good for you. Where are you? There's so many of us, so many of you, 
that are living in bondage today because you haven't forgiven people that have hurt you. And for some of you, that hurt, that pain was years ago. Today is time to break free of that and start living in your calling. Start. It's time to forgive because when you forgive, it renews you, it refreshes you. There's some of us that are living in the bottomless pit of despair. We're looking at ourselves as if we're not anyone or anybody, that we're nothing. But God didn't create you as nothing. He created you as something fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. You are greater than you think you are because of who God is and how he has created you to be. And if you are a Christ follower, he lives in you. You pick yourself up and start living according to the calling. Start being helping other people, being in people's lives, being a blessing to others instead of making the light and the focus on your own life and what has happened to you. Some of you are discouraged today and in bondage of discouragement. It's time to encourage yourself in the Lord. He has created you and made you and he has great things he wants to do in and through your life. Where are you? Are you living in your calling or in your choices? Are you under, under the influence of everything else or are you under the influence of an almighty God? Are you focused on how many likes you get, how much followers you have, or even on the lives of others? You live your life based on how others are living their lives. Are you basing your life on that? Are you living under that type of bondage? Or are you living the life that God has created you to live, where there's freedom, where there's life, where there's victory, where there's glory, and where there's love? It's time to recognize where you are. And if you are not where God desires you to be, if you're not fully living in the calling God has for your life, today's the day to break free and to experience true freedom, not freedom that we are told through the Constitution, not freedom that we think we have through our choices, but the freedom that God has given us by creating us, by establishing us, by saving us, by giving us life, and by filling us in with his Holy Spirit. The freedom that he has given us. It's time to walk in it. He loved like a hurricane, I am a tree.